Stop with the lies and the excuses. Stop lying to yourself. Seriously, though, <clears throat> I want to talk about a couple things. I wasn't sure about what to talk about today. I was praying and seeking the mind and will of God and he kept impressing this one thing on my heart. Last week I talked about um, understanding where you are, understanding your time and your season. With that being said, <clears throat> it's very easy to lie to ourselves about where we are. We have a tendency to want to portray something that we are not. We have a tendency to want to put on a show. We have a tendency to want no one to know the hurts that we have experienced, uh, the hurts that we have now. We don't want anyone to know what's going on in our life. By the way, I'm Dennis Marks III. So glad that you're tuning in. I'm going to make this as short as possible. I got to pick up Jameson here in a couple minutes. So, uh, But I wanted to relate to you what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this hour. Uh, I want to read a couple scriptures for you. So please don't tune off and make an excuse as to why you didn't hear the word of the Lord today. But let me, hear, let me say this. Whosoever has an ear to hear, let them hear. Whosoever has an ear to hear, let them hear. All right. It's from the book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 17. Uh, with verse 9 it says that the the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all and who can know it the heart the heart is desperately wicked and deceitful above all this translation here uh, says uh, <clears throat> the human mind uh, that is the the essence of who you are the facility of your being okay the human mind is more deceitful than anything else. It is incurably bad. Who can understand it? Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, probe into people's minds. I examine people's hearts. I deal with each person according to how he has behaved. I give them what they deserve based on what they have done. So the Bible says very clearly that the, the, the heart, is desperately wicked it's deceitful above all it's incurably bad there's no cure for how terrible the inner man truly is and the scripture says that we don't know it in fact we lie to ourselves about it we don't want to come face to face with the reality that cancer exists we don't want to come face to face with the, re the reality that a greater than cancer a sin dwells inside of the very fabric of our beings so we lie about it we say that's not the case and we pass the buck we blame the issue on everything but what is actually causing the issue it's from the heart that all these issues stem jesus said it's from the heart of a man that one is defiled it's not the outside things. It's not it's not your neighbor. It's it's not so and so. It is it's what's inside of you. <clears throat> when Adam and Eve decided to sin and God was looking for them, he made this statement. He said, "Have you eaten of the tree that I told you not to eat of?" Adam said, "Well, the woman you gave me made me do it." So God directed his attention to the woman and the woman said, "Well, the serpent tricked me see that's what i'm talking about right there that's what the bible's talking about they were not willing to confess the issue that existed inside of them they were not willing to look at the man in the mirror they were not willing to swallow the hard truth so god had to deal with them accordingly he had to show them their true selves and any time that God shows us our true selves conviction comes in and a lot of people mistakenly look at it as if it's hatred as if God hates us God does not hate you friend God loves you so much he loves you just the way you are God loves us so much that he was willing to die even for our disgusting heart even for our perverse ways the Bible says that our ways are perverse. 
You understand that we are full of iniquity. We are we are full of perversion. And most of us don't want to admit that. But the sooner we realize that, the sooner we realize that Jesus Christ can help us. The sooner we realize that he is our only source of help. He's the only one that can look inside of us and diagnose us properly. He's the only one that has the true cure. Praise the Lord for that. I say all this because I don't want to lie to myself. God's looking for people who have integrity. God's looking for people who want to be healed. I want to be healed. I bet you want to be healed too. I bet you want to be whole. I bet you want to be perfected. So we have to let God do a, a deep examination of our hearts so that he, he, he can write some things that are out of place inside of us. Let's look at another scripture. Amen. Psalm 51 says, have mercy on me, O God, because of your loyal love, because of your great compassion. Wipe away my rebellious acts. Wash away my wrongdoing. Cleanse me of my sin, for I am aware of my rebellious acts. I am forever conscious of my sin. Against you, you above all, I have sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight, so you are just when you confront me. We need God to confront us in this hour. Yeah. We need God to confront us with some things. Most people don't want their sin exposed. They don't want to be told that they're a sinner. All right, well, if you don't want to be told that you're a sinner, go to him and tell him you are. That's where it's at. That's where you can find begin to find your redemption. That's where you can begin to find a healing for your soul. The Bible says that in John... Eight, there was a woman caught in adultery and they brought this woman to Jesus and a lot of people like to point out the fact that he did not condemn her because he said let those who have the first sin, uh, let those who are without sin cast the first stone and the Bible says that everyone disappeared and he said well where's your accusers and she said they all left he goes well then nor will I condemn you but that's not how the story ended Jesus said, now go and sin no more. Which means Jesus confronted her face to face about the issue. He was willing to address this is the issue. He was willing to tell her, you would never have been publicly humiliated if you came to me. All right. If you were not in this situation to begin with. You understand that the shame came as a result of the sin. So don't sin anymore. If you don't want shame, don't sin. If you don't want the feeling of guilt, don't sin. God never okayed the sin. He came to take away the sin. But we got to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. I'm going to try to finish here. Back to Psalm 51. I have done what is evil in your sight, so you are just when you confront me. You are right when you condemn me. Look, I was guilty of sin from my birth, a sinner, the moment my mother conceived me. Look, you desire integrity in the in, inner man. God's looking for you to be the same person at all times. Not just when some people are looking. Not just when you're trying to find likes. Not just when you're trying to gather a following. Honestly, I could care less about any of you following me. I'm not looking for that. I'm here to deliver the word of God, whether you like to hear it or not. I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He cares about you so much that he wants you to see the disgustingness of your inside so that you would cry out to him. That you would cry out to the only one that is able to save your soul. Oh, he wants to save your soul. Look at this. You desire integrity in the inward man. You want me to possess wisdom. Verse 7, cleanse me with hyssop and I will be pure. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Grant me the ultimate joy 
of being forgiven. The psalmist David, a man after God's own heart. This is why he's a man after God's own heart. Because he was willing to recognize that from the moment I was conceived, my nature is sin. My nature is to go astray. My nature is to do what's wrong. It is who I am. But then he says, but you can cleanse me. You can make me whiter than snow. Oh, you can forgive me. And if you forgive me, that's all that matters. Then I don't need to beg for someone else's forgiveness. Let's continue this. Oh, I love this psalm. Grant me the ultimate joy of being forgiven. May the bones you crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins. Wipe away all my guilt. Create for me a pure heart, O God. Renew a resolute spirit within me. Do not reject me. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Let me again experience the joy of your deliverance, of your salvation. Sustain me by giving me the desire to obey. Then I will teach rebels. Your merciful ways and sinners will turn to you. Rescue me from the guilt of murder. O oh God, the God who delivers me, then my tongue will shout for joy because of your righteousness. O oh Lord, give me the words, then my mouth will praise you. Certainly, you do not want a sacrifice or else I would offer it. You do not desire a burnt sacrifice. The sacrifice God desires, ready for it? The sacrifice God desires is a humble spirit. O oh God, a humble and repentant heart you will not reject because you favor Zion. Do what is good for her. Fortify the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will accept the proper sacrifices, burnt sacrifices, and whole offerings. Then bulls will be sacrificed on your awful. So God's looking for a humble and repentant heart. He's looking for us to come to him. God desires us so much that when we want nothing to do with him, he came to us. We were yet sinners when he died for us. Before you woke up this morning, God had already died for you. Before your mama gave birth to you, Jesus Christ died for you. He did it not so you can stay in this wicked condition. This is a lie from the devil. This lie is that God loves you just the way you are. He does love you the way you are. We're ready for it? That is a misconceived understanding in itself. He doesn't love you just the way you are and want you to stay the way you are. Listen to me. He loves you too much to let you stay in that condition. If you have an aunt or an uncle or a family member, a friend who has cancer, don't you want them to be well? Don't you want them to get better? Or do you say, well, I love you the way you are and I'm sorry you have cancer and you have to die, but it is what it is. I don't want you to change at all. No, we want that person to be made well. We want them to be made whole. So too, if you have someone near to you who, who, who is struggling with drugs or addictions, uh, their life's not going well. We love them the way they are, but we love them too much to want to see them stay in that position. So too, God doesn't want to see us chained with sin. He doesn't want to see us shame, chained with regrets. He doesn't want to see us chained uh, with depression. And anxiety and all sorts of fears that are over our life because of, you ready for it? The wickedness of our own hearts. So we're in closing, we're going to pray. And we need the Lord to search us and to know us. We need him to search our hearts. We need him to expose those areas of us so that we can be healed. He wants to heal us beyond a physical healing. He wants to heal us in the place of our emotions. He wants to heal our spirit. You understand? He wants to heal the places where we have been wounded, where we have been taken advantage of. We got to be honest with him first. Oh, Jesus. Father, we need you. We can do nothing without you. 
We come to you right now because your word has convicted us. You do not hate us. You love us. And you want to you wanna see us get well. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that you are able to forgive sins. I thank you that you are able to make us whole. I thank you that you can make us new. Oh, Jesus, we need you. We need you, Jesus. Search us in Noah. Search me, Father. Search me. I lie to myself far too often. Pray with me, people. Pray with me. Do not just listen to what I'm saying, but pray with me. Father, help us. Help those that are listening right now. Search the inner depths of our hearts and help us to understand that we need you. Father, expose those places that we hide from ourselves. The places that are too, too dark, too disgusting. You're not afraid to get involved. You're not afraid to touch those places. You're not afraid to reach out your hand and touch the leopard. You are willing to heal a leopard even like me. You're willing to set us on the path of righteousness. Oh, Father, won't you renew in us a right spirit? Let there be integrity found inside of our being. Oh, far too often we are one way with some people and another way with other people. We have a vision of who we think we ought to be, but it is so far from the truth. Jesus, we need your truth to reign on the inside. We need you to reign in the inner man. We need your Holy Spirit. We need your Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, your word says there's no good thing inside of us except that is you. I'm praying that you are truly inside of us. Your word says that some of us don't have the Holy Ghost. Some of us don't have your spirit. And we lie even about such things. Father, help us. Let your word convict us. Let us not escape the truth and the reality. Your word says that you, you, you would give a strong delusion to such people who would not receive a love for the truth. I, I don't want to be deceived, Lord Jesus. I do not want to receive a strong delusion. I do not want to go through a false reality. I don't want to be locked in the matrix. Father, I want to experience your reality i want to experience the truth oh father expose the places where we have offered up incense unto other gods expose the places where we have made ourselves our own god father expose the places where we have performed all sorts of abominable practices oh father remove the witchcraft from our life remove the rebellion Remove the demonic influences, Lord Jesus, that we have allowed to come into our life. Father, won't you deliver us? Won't you deliver us? Deliver us from demonic voices. Deliver us from suicidal thoughts. Deliver us, Father, from the voices that say we ought to put a bullet in our brain. Deliver us. Deliver us, Lord Jesus. Oh, deliver this people that is listening right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ. Hallelujah. I'm asking, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come, Jesus. As it is in heaven, let it so be in the earth. In heaven, there are no devils. In heaven, there's no sickness. In heaven, there are no more bruises. In heaven, the only scars are your own. Because you will give us a new and glorified body. Well, as it is in heaven, Lord, let it so be in the earth. Hallelujah. Your people need healing right now. Your people are in distress. Your people are altogether overwhelmed. Jesus, we need you. Deliver someone. 
Listen, listen, somebody, you can be delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ right now. If you would begin to reach out to him, if you would begin to call upon his name, Father, we are calling on the name of Jesus Christ. We are confessing that there is no other name given to men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus, you say that whosoever calls upon you, they will be saved. Father, save us. Save us. We cannot save ourselves. Oh, Father, won't you filter our lives? Won't you remove the leaven? Won't you remove the sin? Wash us and make us clean. Oh, Father, help us. We have not lived an obedient life to your word. We have not done the things that you have called us to do. We have not been the representatives you've called us to be. Oh, Father, we have been like bastard children to you. Oh, Father, we have been like strangers to you. Oh, Father, we only call on your name when it is convenient for you, for, for, for us. Oh, Father, we make excuses and we lie. Oh, we do not read your word, but we have time to be on Facebook for 40 minutes at a time. Oh, we do not pray, but we have time to binge watch things on Netflix. Jesus, we need you. We need you, Lord. We need you to do an operation on our heart. We need you to do a serious operation on our heart. Oh, Father, your word says that the broken uh, hearted and the contrite spirit, the repentant heart, you will not reject them, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, draw us near to you. Give us a spirit of repentance. Give us a spirit of turning unto you. Turn us back to you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, this world has got a grip on us. Uh, let us not lie about us. Oh, Father, we are lying. We are lying about it. Oh, Jesus, be merciful. Be merciful when you look at us. Remember the blood that you shed on Calvary. Remember that we are like the apple of your eye. Remember that it was worth it to you to go to the cross for us. Oh, I thank you for the blood, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for the blood. Thank you for the victory. Thank you, my God. I bless you. I praise you. I give you the glory. Oh, draw us near to you, Jesus. We need you. We need you. That's it. Keep praying. Call upon the name of the Lord, and he will answer you. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. In Jesus' name.